Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today, it's time to look at another RTX technology, and one that's been causing a bit of a stir in the community over the last week or so. That technology is NVIDIA's Deep Learning Super Sampling, or DLSS, which has finally made its way to both Battlefield 5 and Metro Exodus. As is the usual case for us, we'll be going through a full visual and performance breakdown in this video, and boy, you're in for a fun ride with this one. So we're sticking to Battlefield 5 in this investigation because according to both NVIDIA and 4A Games, the implementation of DLSS in Metro Exodus is a bit early and still needs some polish. However, we haven't heard any such issues with Battlefield 5, so we're gonna focus on that game for now, and maybe we'll check out Metro at a later date, depending on our schedule. You might recall that we already investigated DLSS way back in September of last year when we looked at the two demos NVIDIA had for the launch of their RTX GPUs. The demos weren't particularly great as they were essentially canned benchmarks, which we felt would give NVIDIA's DLSS neural network an unrealistic advantage at optimizing the image quality compared to a dynamic game environment. However, we still discovered back then that DLSS performed roughly the same as reducing the image from 4K to 1800p while providing roughly the same image quality as 1800p. So wasn't exactly off to a good start. DLSS has also been available in a real world game, Final Fantasy XV, for a little while now, but we also didn't want to test that game because it has a terrible anti-aliasing implementation that's really not reflective of most other decent games. But both Battlefield 5 and Metro Exodus have pretty good anti-aliasing, they're not just crappy blur filters, which provides an excellent comparison between DLSS and a high quality native image. In all DLSS games released so far, DLSS is heavily locked down, preventing you from simply enabling it with any combination of settings or resolutions. In the case of Battlefield 5, you must have DXR reflections enabled to enable DLSS, so there is no option to use DLSS without ray tracing. That's already pretty disappointing because we feel most gamers should play with ray tracing switched off in this game. Unfortunately, you can't just use DLSS to improve upon the already excellent performance you get without ray tracing. But it's locked down further than that, on a GPU by GPU basis. If you're playing at 4K, all RTX cards can access DLSS. However, if you're a 1440p gamer, the option is only available for the RTX 2080 and below, so it's not available with the RTX 2080 Ti. At 1080p, only the RTX 2060 and 2070 can use DLSS, and there are similar limitations with Metro Exodus. According to NVIDIA, the reasons for this restriction are that activating the neural network for DLSS takes a fixed amount of time for each frame. As your performance level increases, DLSS begins to occupy a proportionally higher percentage of the rendering time, up to a point where for fast GPUs, it takes longer to process DLSS than it does for the native frame. So NVIDIA has made the choice to block users from activating DLSS in situations where the performance uplift is negligible, or in some cases even worse than just using native rendering. This definitely prevents DLSS from being that one-click performance improving feature NVIDIA advertised it as. Many popular configurations, especially those that deliver high frame rate gameplay, like the RTX 2080 Ti at 1440p, can't benefit from DLSS. Before I jump into the image quality comparisons, this time I wanted to go over the performance first. As always, I've tested Battlefield 5 with my Core i9 9900K test rig, and for this initial batch of 4K testing, I used a GeForce RTX 2080 Ti, with all settings set to Ultra. The test run was my standard Battlefield 5 test run at the beginning of the Tiro year level. So in our classic blue benchmark chart, there are five data points. We have the performance at native 4K, then performance at 4K with DLSS enabled, and then native 1440p. Crucially, I've also added in performance with the game set to 4K, but with a 78% render scale. As you can see here, the performance of 4K at 78% resolution, which equates to a resolution of about 2995 by 1685, is roughly the same as 4K DLSS, and this will come into play for the quality comparison later. Then there's also the performance with ray tracing and DLSS disabled. Compared to native 4K rendering, which with Ultra DXR reflections is only a 40 FPS experience, DLSS improves performance by 37% looking at average frame rates. So that's 
not too bad. Again, it's the same as rendering at a 78% resolution scale, but it's definitely a sizable improvement. However, it doesn't bring the game running at 4K with DXR back up to the performance level of the game running without ultra ray tracing. Switching off DXR led to an 88% performance improvement. Yeah, this is ultra DXR, not low, but our previous testing has shown the performance gain going from low to off to still be around 50%. So from what we've seen, DLSS really isn't that magic performance switch that simply brings ray trace performance back up to the level of no ray tracing, at least in our test conditions. But the real kicker is looking at the visual quality comparisons. We'll start with native 4K versus 4K DLSS. Across all the scenes I tested, there is a severe loss of detail when switching on DLSS. Just look at the trees in this scene. The 4K presentation is exactly what you'd expect. Sharp, clean, high detail on both the foliage and trunk textures. But DLSS is like a strong blur filter has been applied. Texture detail is completely wiped out. In some cases, it's like you've loaded a low texture mode, while some of the fine branch detail has been blurred away or even thickened in some cases, which makes the game look kind of weird in some situations. Of course, this is to be expected. DLSS was never going to provide the same image quality as native 4K, while also providing a 37% performance uplift. That would be, well, pretty much black magic. But the quality difference comparing the two is almost laughable in how far away DLSS is from the native presentation in these stressful areas. It gets worse though, and we'll switch to a different scene for this one. Here is a comparison between DLSS and our 78% resolution scale, so roughly 1685p, which we found to perform exactly the same as DLSS, not just in our test run, but also in a variety of other scenes. It's a complete non-contest. The 1685p image destroys the DLSS image in terms of sharpness, texture quality, clarity, basically everything. Just look at the quality difference between these two areas when zoomed in. The 78% scaled image preserves the fine detail on the rocks, the sign, the sandbags, the cloth, the gun, pretty much everywhere. With DLSS, everything is blurred to the point that this detail is lost. And we're not talking about a situation where DLSS is noticeably better at anti-aliasing. The 1685p image is already using Battlefield's TAA implementation, which is quite good. There are some instances where DLSS is smoother, looking at extremely fine detail when zoomed, reveals less aliasing in thin tree branches, but this has come at the complete loss of detail in the foliage on the trees and, well, everywhere else as well. And I only spotted this when zoomed in. Looking at the full image on a regular 4K PC monitor, it's hard to tell the difference in aliasing because the pixel count is already very high and the non-DLSS presentation with TAA removes most of the key artifacts you'd spot without anti-aliasing. This leaves DLSS simply looking like Vaseline has been smeared on the display. That last scene was particularly bad for DLSS, but there's a common theme throughout the areas I tested. And we're not even talking about DLSS versus native 4K here. We're talking about DLSS versus a 1685p image upscaled to 4K, both of which deliver the same performance. 1685p is a little behind native 4K in terms of sharpness, as you'd expect from upscaling, but DLSS is miles behind either of them. In some situations, I wouldn't even say DLSS is superior to a 1440p image upscale to 4K. 1440p sees a further loss of fine detail to the image, and in some environments, DLSS can restore that detail and smooth out any jagged artifacts. However, the DLSS image is still very soft and blurred, often with lower texture detail than 1440p. It depends on the environment, and it's definitely a lot closer than some of our previous comparisons, but a lot of the same problems remain. It gets closer again if you downscale the 4K DLSS image to native 1440p and do the comparison at that resolution, rather than upscaling both to 4K, but even then, DLSS isn't clearly better. The problem I feel is that Battlefield 5's regular TAA implementation is too good. It's not perfect or anything, but it's pretty good and doesn't blur out the image like TAA can do in other games. Final Fantasy XV, for example, was quite blurry with TAA enabled. Compare that TAA image to DLSS in that game and yeah, the image quality is pretty similar, but Battlefield 5 is sharper overall and DLSS simply can't match up. In fact, the native and scaled images completely obliterate the blurry mess that is DLSS. 
I did do some brief testing at 1440p as well, this time with an RTX 2070. Here DLSS performs more in line with an 84% resolution scale, so roughly 2150 by 1210, delivering a modest 18% performance improvement over native 1440p. Part of this is due to 1440p performing better on the RTX 2070 than 4K does on the 2080 Ti with Ultra DXR. The other part is the RTX 2070's more limited RT and Tensor Core resources. Again, we're seeing most of the same problems at 1440p as we did at 4K. The DLSS image is softer and blurrier compared to upscaling a 1210p image to 1440p. In some areas there is less aliasing, but that advantage is not worth it when the overall image is so blurry. DLSS is an improvement in some areas over native 1080p, but again, it's not an overall victory. So there's really no other way to put it. DLSS sucks. From what we've seen testing it in Battlefield 5, as well as Metro Exodus, which is supposedly still a non-perfect implementation, DLSS is complete garbage and a huge waste of time. A lot of people hate it on ray tracing in the implementations we've seen so far, but to me, DLSS is by far the worst of the two key RTX features. The problems with DLSS aren't even all that hard to summarize. DLSS provides much worse image quality than upscaling from a resolution that provides equivalent performance. For 4K gamers with the 2080 Ti, our upscaled 1685p image looked far better than DLSS while providing an equivalent performance uplift over native 4K. At 1440p, upscaling from 1210p also looks better than DLSS. This is a significantly worse outcome than our initial DLSS investigation. Previously, in an optimal canned benchmark, DLSS looked and performed like an 1800p image, so it provided no benefit. Here, DLSS looks worse than a 1685p image at the same performance, so enabling DLSS in a real-world game like Battlefield 5 is actually worse than using simple resolution upscaling that's been available in games for decades. And that's why DLSS is complete rubbish. At least with ray tracing, we're getting a superior image than what we had before at admittedly a high performance cost. But with DLSS, we're not gaining anything in either the performance or visuals department compared to traditional techniques. This is kind of what I feared when DLSS was first demonstrated. While not all that impressive in canned demos either, I assumed having a highly repeatable benchmark with the exact same frames in each run would present the absolute best case scenario for the AI-based reconstruction DLSS users. The AI could just train itself on high resolution samples of the exact frames it will then reconstruct later. But games are far more dynamic than this. It's impossible at this stage to train a neural network for every single frame a game could output. So when DLSS is paired with a a real world game, not just a canned demo, it completely falls apart trying to reconstruct frames it's never seen before. Because this is a neural network that is constantly learning, yeah, DLSS could improve over time. But the gap between DLSS and our equivalent upscaled images are so large that who knows how long it will take for DLSS to catch up, if it's even possible. Right now though, it's clearly a bust. There are going to be some times where the comparison between DLSS on and off will be more favourable even in dynamic games. Titles that have crappy anti-aliasing implementations such as Final Fantasy XV or more recent games like Resident Evil 2 with TAA are already quite blurry. So if you compared the already blurry TAA to DLSS, both would simply look blurry and DLSS would look a lot better. But many modern titles have been optimizing TAA to look better than ever, preserving much more detail than older implementations, and DLSS simply can't keep up. And Battlefield 5 is being pretty much a prime example here. And this is without mentioning all the limitations that come with DLSS, including limited resolution support depending on the GPU you have, and for Battlefield 5, the inability to use DLSS without ray tracing. On top of that, Nvidia admits this is basically useless for high frame rate gaming, unlike resolution upscaling, which works across everything. For DLSS to actually be useful, several things need to happen. Nvidia needs to find a way to make it less restricted, then it needs to do one of two things. Either they need to improve the reconstruction techniques to make image quality massively better than what we're getting today, or they need to find a way to make DLSS run better so the performance uplift is much larger. And because I'm not talking about a minor improvement, but a major improvement here, it's going to be a pretty hard task. 
As it stands today, DLSS in Battlefield 5 is so bad, I think it actually should be removed from the game entirely. Gamers are potentially being robbed of either extra performance or extra visual quality through choosing to use DLSS over the less frequently talked about resolution scaling setting. Having the setting in the game might tempt gamers into using it when it at best provides no benefit and at worst is actually degrading the experience. Only when DLSS is at least equivalent to resolution scaling should the feature then be reintroduced into the game. Unfortunately, DLSS was a feature that people were thinking would be the best of the RTX features, judging by the way Nvidia was selling it. The claims essentially amounted to a free performance uplift thanks to the power of AI, and that's what a lot of gamers thought they'd get. But the reality, it's pretty much so far from this that it's basically laughable. And that's basically it for my thoughts on DLSS. A lot of this stuff is also true for Metro Exodus, but considering that implementation is apparently still not final yet, I didn't want to do a deep dive on it just yet. In fact, I probably won't unless updates make it noticeably better than in Battlefield 5. Right now, my recommendation for DLSS across all games is basically just don't use it. And play around with your resolution scaling sliders to see how the performance and visual impact uh, will improve your gaming experience there. Uh, if you like this sort of content, consider subscribing for more. We also have a Patreon where you can support us to get cool perks like our Discord community and behind the scenes videos. I'll catch you in the next one.